and it says start and I push it again. We are now cross band repeating and I'll demonstrate what this looks like. We will hear the local repeater, which is on this side, kerchunk through here and into the handheld. And there it is. So let's, uh, let's dive into the radio. I'll just quickly show you uh, a real quick how to program basics of this here radio. Um, I think it's fairly straightforward. I do not own the right cable to plug it into the computer. So all of the program that I have done has been through just the front of the panel here uh, using the microphone and, and the buttons as you see. So let's take a look. So let's do a brief overview of the Yaesu FT-8900R. As you see here, this is uh, where it's positioned in my car, wedged in with the cup holders. Uh, never mind this, this is uh, part of the camera tripod here. But anyways, let's take a look at the knob. So over here, you have the volume knob for the right side. The squelch is right underneath it. You have the channel knob. To the left side, you have the other channel knob, the volume, and the squelch. So as you can see, you have full controls of both the left and the right uh, VFO. Uh, you've got several memories, which are very handy, and then a series of switches that both match each other. So low power to change the output of the transmitter. You have your VFO slash memory to toggle between VFO if you just want to punch in a frequency or bring up your memory channels. You have a uh, home. Home button is also an additional programmed in other than these buttons as far as the memories go. So you can have a home on this side and a home on that side. And then of course a scan to scan through your channels. So let's turn it on. By turning it on, you'll press and hold this guy. Now one thing that I really like about it is when it fires up, it shows the voltage currently of, uh, of the battery or maybe it's power supply that it has and I wish there was a way to turn that on or toggle that instead of switching the radio on and off. So here you see I have my memories brought up. It, this is where you'll toggle, toggle your VFO and so now you're in VFO in which you can take a controller and just punch in whatever numbers you want back to memory. Now currently if I key up and start talking I'll be on this side of the radio because you'll see it's in the main and that is lit up there and you can toggle from the left to the right by simply depressing the tuning knob here like this. Now I'm on this side of the radio now I'm on that side of the radio and that is only to control which side of the radio you're going to be transmitting because as I mentioned before, this does have a dual VFO. So at the same time, you'll be receiving a signal on both sides. It can get a little much uh, listening to two different conversations, but uh, <laughs> it has been done. So here you can see the power button. We can toggle that through. Very conveniently placed. Your memory channels to bring up your memory. One thing I wanted to point out, because depending on your radio, the terminology can change. So in this Yesu model radio, you see the word ENCODE, or I should say the abbreviation for the word ENCODE and the abbreviation for the word DECODE. Uh, the ENCODE signifies and is in the display showing you that when you press the transmit, you'll transmit your PL tone, your privacy tone, in this case, it sets the CTCSS tone, but it's going out encoded, and that allows the repeater to work. And then if you want to ensure you will only hear that particular repeater, you can also select decode. Now in my area, this frequency here does have another repeater that occasionally breaks my squelch, and, uh, and to get rid of that, I just simply put the decode on. But most of the time, I'll just run the encode like you see here on the right, right hand side. And then here you have the menu button. Pushing the menu button will allow you to go through all your different menus. 
I believe there's a total of 45, six. <laughs> I'm not gonna go over all the different features of this radio, as there is a lot, but I do wanna go over the most common thing an amateur radio operator is gonna wanna do with his radio, and oftentimes uh, makes his decision whether or not if the radio is for him or her. And that is, how easy is it to program in a local repeater? Simplex, obviously that's pretty straightforward. So from here, let's go into VFO mode. You can turn this to the frequency you want. That might take you a while. So instead what you can do is utilize the remote because the remote has a full touchpad on it. So we're gonna go one, four, five, four, seven, zero. AF6 VYH mobile, W6 VVR repeater. <laughs> Alrighty, that is our local repeater. So from here, you noticed automatically it recognizes that this might be a repeater frequency and has put up in the display a shift. You can actually see the shift over here for 70 centimeters because oftentimes it does have a positive shift. There is a menu in here to turn that function on and off, but by default that is on. So right away it's guessing hopefully in the right direction for you. Uh, your mileage will vary, obviously depending where you live. So from here, you we're going to jump into the menu, pushing the center button. Now one of the easiest things you can do is make maybe a little card for your car, a little note, if you will. You'll just quickly write down the menu options that you need to program in a frequency. And that is if you can't really remember offhand. So let's turn to menu 39. I'm going to go backwards to get there quicker. Menu 39, they call it Tone F. This sets the CTCSS tone frequency. And that will be your PL tone. So once you've selected it, you're going to go ahead and push the adjustment knob here. And we're set to 127.3. And you can turn it to all the common ones you might need. Once you come up with the one you like, you just simply push that in. That now sets it. We'll go on to menu 40. Menu 40 is tone M. This selects the tone encode and the decode. So here if we push this, this will bring us in and ask us, do you want to encode, encode and decode, or DCS, or off? So in our case, in most cases I should say, you're probably just going to want to encode with an occasionally maybe an encode and a decode. So we'll just leave it like this and select. Now, if you want to verify a few things, you can turn to menu 33, and that's repeater mode. Now we already know it's in repeater mode because we had that minus sign appear. But let's take a look what are the options. Minus, positive, off. So we'll keep it to minus. The other thing this radio does very good is it also understands that on the two meter side of things, in most cases, it's going to be a 600 kilohertz offset. And for 70 centimeters, it'll be the five megahertz offset. But we can verify this by going to menu 36. And they call it shift. Shift sets the magnitude of the repeater shift that is needed. We can go into it, and there we are. Very good. So now that we're all set up, we'll simply go back here to the frequency we will put in. It has the encode. It has the negative offset there. It displays the minus. And in most cases, what you often hear all day long on your local repeaters is people kerchunking the repeater. Now, once and done, that's not too bad. But, uh, you know, five or ten times, that can get a little annoying. But anyways, let's see if we're successful here with our local repeater. So we'll just simply do a quick mic key and let go. Okay, that was a very successful program. So now we're going to put it into our memory. For this, 
it's very simple. You're just gonna press down and hold your menu button. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell you the next available memory channel, one, two, seven. And of course, we can change that if we want to something else, but you can see here, one, two, seven is available. So just simply press the menu button again. Memory in. Now let's push our VFO menu button and see if it's there. There it is. Exactly what we just programmed. So all in all, the Yaesu FT8900R, I think, is a fairly simple radio to have in your car, to go down the road, chat with all your friends and other hams on the local repeaters, or even simplex. In this case, you even have two additional bands that you never know who you might contact. And I feel like it's fairly straightforward and simple to program in your local repeaters uh, without any cables. Now one thing to note is on this side of the radio has all of the bands. 2 meter, 70 centimeter, 6 meter, and 10 meter. And you can see that if I push scan. I'll just fast forward. I'll just click through all the ones. So there it's scanning all the frequencies I have. So there for a second there you saw some 6 meters go through and so forth. I don't have any 10 meters programmed. Then if you go to this side of the radio, if you, if you watch what scans here, this doesn't do the 10 meter or the 6 meter side of things. This only does the 2 meter and 70 centimeter. One feature I've really come to like a lot about this radio is the crossband repeat function. I've used this a few times at work where from my office I was wanting to monitor the local repeater while doing some paperwork. But where I work is a good 50 miles away and I work inside of a large metal building. So with that I have my car parked in the parking lot maybe 50 yards away from the building and then I just bring my uh, my inexpensive HT inside with me. And what I've done is I program memory channel two to remember the settings that I like. So I push memory channel two. On the left side, you see I have a simplex 446.50. And on the right, I have the local repeater that I really enjoy listening to and using. So here then on my HT, I just simply bring up the simplex channel, 446.50. And I'll demonstrate the simplex. So there you see it lighting up as it's receiving, obviously, because I'm sitting in the car with a little feedback. KM6 FAK. But you can clearly see that nothing is happen happening over here because currently I do not have the cross band repeat function activated. To do that, I simply bring up the menu and I go to menu 44. And if it's not there already, I can turn it. Once it's in menu 44, I, I push this to select it, and it says start, and I push it again. We are now cross-band repeating, and I'll demonstrate what this looks like by keying up again. This time you'll see it'll come in here, and then it'll go out there. And I have the volume up. Currently I have the volume turned down on the radio, the Yesu, and the volume turned up on the Bofang. So in this case, we will hear the local repeater, which is on this side, kerchunk through here and into the handheld. And there it is. So in this case, I could carry on a QSO simply using this HT, talking to the left side of the radio and out of the right side of the radio. And this can be reversed or however you like it. It's very flexible and very useful if you want to utilize your vehicle's 50 watt radio. Now, I do recommend keeping an eye on your battery and possibly not running the max power the entire time, or you most likely will kill your battery and might be stuck at work. From here, to remove yourself out of crossband repeat, we'll just push the menu button and it, it cancels it. So now if we key up, we're just keying this side of the radio up.
Now, believe it or not, my install didn't require any drilling or screws or anything mounted for that matter. I was at first thinking about some kind of cell phone holder to hold the front plate, maybe a suction cup. Um, but the way this car is set up, I really didn't see, you know, what I could do. I've got this cell phone holder here on the vent and that, that, that barely works. Um, but what I actually came up with and found is the face plate, it comes with this uh, bracket and that bracket is here. It uh, looks like this. And I put some gaffer's tape right there on it. And so the dimensions with the gaffer's tape and that goes in there actually squeezes in between this cup, cup holder. So <laughs> I got a real kick out of that. It's just a matter of kind of giving it a bit of a wedge. And it works out really nice because as I'm driving, I can glance down, I can grab my volume, I can grab my squelch, and you very quickly kind of remember where all the buttons are. And then as far as where I put the radio, you can see it, it's right under here in this kind of interesting pass-through area they, they gave me in the car. So the radio is here. Uh, the cable that I needed was included to uh, connect the remote head all the way up here, and I've got more than enough. And then I, uh, I had this uh, older CB radio speaker laying around this Cobra. Plug was exactly what I need, plugged, it, plugged right in the back. And, uh, and it all just kind of sits in here. So nothing is mounted. Everything can be picked up and pulled out. A lot of times when we go places in the RV, I will, uh, I will grab it out of here and mount it in the RV. Um, then of course I've got the, uh, the power cables. Uh, kind of got lucky again. In this car, the battery is not in the engine compartment, so I just had to take the battery cables, um, the power cables there, and just run it underneath the carpet there through the trim in the back, so the battery's in the trunk. Hopefully you've got the same, a, a similar situation and you don't gotta find your way through the firewall, because that's kind of tricky. And then the, um, the antenna here, through uh, got a 90 on here, so it fits in nice, again, through the carpet. So one thing I want to mention is with this radio, it only has uh, one antenna jack on the back. So in order to, uh, to get this to work on multiple different antennas, uh, if you don't have an all-band antenna in this case, and there is an antenna that uh, Diamond does sell, uh, what you have to run is some kind of duplexer. So that's under the seat here. So in my case, I have a, a Comet duplexer. Uh, so the antenna plugs right into there. And then from there it splits out the two meter, 70 centimeter side of things to my dual bander on the roof. And then over here is where I'm running the six meter, uh, 50 megahertz side of things. And that seems to work real good. I've tested uh, a few things with and without this as far as the radio sens uh, sensitivity and the power and the radio doesn't even know that it's there. So that's kind of a neat thing to have if you do want to run multiple antennas. Now just like installing a radio, installing antennas can be done in many different ways. I personally went with the mag mounts. Now right here you're seeing two mag mounts. The front mag mount is uh, pancake style by Diamond with a uh, 2 meter, 70 centimeter dual band antenna whip. This is primarily on the car all the time. This, this uh, mount back here is an older Diamond mount. Uh, NMO style with the uh, six meter whip on the back. Now this here, I don't always run. There's a handful of us that'll try to uh, do six meter simplex, as well as there is a fairly local repeater up in the foothills uh, for six meters. Now I personally like the mag mount. They can be pulled off. You can clean the car good, loan it to a family, maybe have the wife drive it, and it's not that big a deal. Now one thing I have noticed uh, running some antennas for a little bit now through the door is when you come through the top water will find its way down through so I came up with this here kind of uh, feed it in between the two doors and then pass it along the side of the seal because at that point from my experience the water won't run down 
It'll run here and then stop, but it won't get into the side seal where it does find its way into this top seal. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, as I open the door, you can see my hideous looking blue paint, blue painter's tape. But if you saw when the door is closed, you can't see it. Now I was running a little black duct tape for a bit and that seemed to be okay. But that's the idea here where you run that along the side seal and it comes down through there and you can just pull it off anytime you want. And when you shut the door, it'll just find its way right back to the middle. Huh? Oh, I must have dozed off. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I wanted to show, uh, wanted to show you what it looked like at night when you're driving the car because that can be just as important what the radio looks like as the uh, display is illuminated and check out the hand mic buttons. And here's what it looks like at night. The backlight is adjustable if you would like to dim it, but that's it. You just get the backlight to the LCD screen. Um, none of the other buttons are illuminated. I often wish they were or maybe a few because at night I find myself kind of feeling around and, and counting the buttons. Now the, uh, the hand mic does have illuminated buttons. Those aren't normally on. Those are toggled on and off with a, a side switch. So that's pretty handy. Um, nice looking display at night. All right, well that's it. Hopefully that helps you find the radio for your car. Let me know if you got any questions or maybe you want something else covered that I didn't really cover. Like I said, this radio has a lot of great features. Uh, I do recommend the Yaesu FT8900R for the car. <laughs> but anyways, uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that like button if you uh, thought I did a good job. We'll see you on the next one. 73.